Video game bang, video game bang, video game bang. Mega brand. Live from the sack, it's the live, it's in fact. I'm putting rhymes on this track to put my guys on the map. Cause they giving you the latest on everything on your playlist. This bet the safest from basements to greatness. Updates, geek news, tech talk, and reviews. They can summarize it so you ain't gotta breeze through. Listen once and you're forever fans. And I'm not saying it because their theme song features Mega Ram. Might think you fly, but ain't nice as my guys. Got eyes on the prize, so like and subscribe. <laughs> we back in the booth. I think that they gon' eat this up. The ultimate source of all geek media. Other podcasts, they just don't match up. Need proof? You can check the archives and catch up. Stats off the chain. We have rearranged the game. It'll never be the same. Now it's time to feel the bang. bang. What is up, bang. my pizzas? Corey Vincent here. Video game bang is back. And just like the stock market, it's about to get dirty. I don't know why that was uh, just trying to be relevant. I thought maybe the keywords would generate more buzz around the, the show. I started learning about SEO. Uh, so expect a lot more buzzwords in the show this week as we uh, try and you know game the system uh speaking of which uh skip and tosh he's back how you doing man not so great my kings just lost by one point after being on a three game winning streak oh. so uh you know not doing so great right now but uh on the flip side on the other end of that l i got all you people to hang out with and podcast with so i can only be so heartbroken yeah after all it's gonna get better you know what, what do the kings need besides a new coach besides Talent? probably a new owner what what what, <laughs> what do the kings need besides pretty much everything a miracle <laughs> you got you got any of those Dang. Got any of those laying around the VGB office? Because uh, oh, I will personally go and deliver it to them. I just sold my last one to the guy uh, who owns GameStop because, jeez, uh, that company is now probably bigger than Amazon and, and Microsoft put together. Uh, but we're going to get there. Uh, and we couldn't because we knew GameStop was going to be a reoccurring theme on here because of the stonk market. So we had to get our GameStop former employee specialists here i'm gonna start with lexi we're gonna go from order uh, of of terms served so we're gonna start with okay. lexi okay. lexi <laughs> how do you feel about your old company man back in business on top i mean honestly i'll i'll say my comments later but i don't think they're really on top um I also do my research and I also am very big into investing. So you guys should pay attention to everything. But yeah, I'll say my comments. Really? Later. So you're a big okay. investor. Were, were you on the front lines of this Wall Street bet? Are you the reason oh. that all this happened? Oh, no, I wasn't on the front lines of this one. But there's another one that I was on the front lines. <laughs> okay. Looking at, all right. Still I, looking into. Are you the founder, right. the founder of Dogecoin right here? Our very own Lexi. <laughs> Here you are, people. Get, out. Get that money. The secret is out. Don't at me for any money, though. I and need then, it to uh, spread love to the world. Rounding out the panel uh, with at least a decade served in the GameStop army. Definitely robbed 10 times. That's like once per year. <laughs> We found out in the pre-show. I knew you got robbed oh. at GameStop because we were we both worked at a GameStop that was not in the nicest neighborhood. I didn't realize it was ten times bad. How yeah. at a point you're like a special like does it even phase you? Like when did it not start affecting you? How many robberies down the line before you were just like, all right, take take what you want, get out of here. <laughs> The first one, because it wasn't my shit. <laughs> I was like, here you go. Take it. Take it all. I don't give I do not care. I It was not my stuff. So I was like, here you go. What do you want? Were they so, surprised at all? Were they like, I'm holding a gun. You, what, what, you're not scared? You're not intimidated? It's another day in the... <laughs> another day in the Thomas. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Um, no, yeah. It, yeah, a decade served, a decade rock. You know, decade worth of robberies. Uh, there was a couple of them I wasn't, I wasn't present for all ten, but 
I, I mean, I was managing the store, so, so I were, still had to deal with yeah, all the paperwork. I still had to, the paperwork, you know, I had, I was at, um, Rancho Cordova when they broke through, was the ceiling or the bathroom? They broke through one of them. They came through one of the other stores. No like, way. Yeah. You got mission. Yeah, there was, in, you got mission impossible at, at a game So, so we had that. So they had that happen once. And then there was another time I showed up for my shift and the, the night before they had tried to ram their car through the front door, but the gate that we, you know, those, those yeah. 30 gates that we had to lock every night that stopped the car. So like leader literally just didn't have a glass window for a couple days during the summer. Um, so no AC. So that was great to work in. So what, what happens? What does GameStop do when you've been robbed? Do they at least send you like a bag of cookies or do you get like some free stuff? Like what? So more, more I didn't what? get nothing. Really? Um, they, get, like, they offered me like to take time off, but it was like against my PTO or it was against either taking it. What? With, like, so they, they like, you could take, you know, PTO, take some time off. They offered like counselors and stuff like that. All the legal minimums that they had to do. Um, and I'm sure it's gotten better now um, yeah. because those things have increased. So like they have to have gotten better. Um, but also, you know, I was offered workman's comp and stuff like that. And so like, I'd usually take like a day or two workman's comp and chill at home, play some games and numb myself to it. And then I'd get back to the grind because I, I need money, man. You know, in it's the like- end, <laughs> we went through a lot of crap working at GameStop, but when they let you check out the games for free, it was all worth it for some reason, man. They, they had us under a spell. They didn't pay us much. The (laughs) conditions weren't great. But, Mm -hmm. man, you can just check out any game you want all the time. Like, damn. That's why uh, I worked so much overtime. I was like, I was literally the, my district manager would yell at me on a yearly basis because I would have the highest or second highest overtime in the entire, like, region. Um, (laughs) Because I was like, I'm working, like, 12, 13-hour days because it's like, I need that money. Yeah. (laughs) Y'all gonna pay me. Well, we have uh, a lot of news this week. Things uh, have definitely picked up. One thing, and we got to uh, literally minutes after we recorded the last episode, we went to Twitter and discovered that Microsoft has decided to completely flip a 180 on Mm -hmm. their price hike, which was one of our big stories last week. They heard us in real time because they're big fans of the show. And Bill Gates called, made some calls, and don't worry, guys. VGB took care of it for you. But they were quick to respond, you know, to their credit. Um, we kind of predicted this would happen due to the amount of outrage and not just the amount of who it was coming from. And they said in a statement, we messed up today. You were right to let us know. Uh, connecting and playing with friends is a vital part of gaming, and we failed to meet the expectations of the players who count on us every day. As a result, we have decided not to change the Xbox Live Gold pricing. So if you're an Xbox Live Gold member already, you stay at your current price for renewal. New and existing members can continue to enjoy Xbox Live Gold for the same prices they pay today in the U.S. $9.99 for one month, $24.99 for three months, and $39.99 for six months, and then $60 for an entire year. Is this surprising to you in the slightest, Skip and Tosh? No, not at all. Well, okay, let me let me backtrack a little bit. Actually, a little bit it is. I think the all of our all of us expected or at least hoped enormously that Microsoft would remove their cranium from their sphincter and <laughs> do right by their customers, their subscribers, their base. And I personally, I only had so much hope in it just because I, in my mind, we've seen this so often, more and more of these coming days of companies making decisions, saying they'll be temporary, you know, or, or something to that capacity, and then them really being permanent and that never getting changed. They didn't say that this was temporary, but I almost kind of took it like, you know, they're testing this out to see and then it's probably going to stick. But I, I am a little surprised that they reversed it at least so quickly and, um, you know, and, and, and even how transparent they were, at least semi-apologetic, I should say. 
uh, about how they, how and what they did. So I'll give them that. Yeah, the straight up said first line of this, you know, statement. We messed up. What are you thinking uh, from your end, from a marketing PR perspective, Lexi? How bad does it feel to be the person that pushes send on the message, on the tweet, on the production, on the press release saying that these prices are changing? I mean, from my perspective, I'm kind of I see like some people in chat saying this, but like I feel like it was like a test. Like, let's see. I mean, also, I think it's smart because they are showing the community. And I know this is one thing on our side. We really want to let fans in the community know, like, you can trust us at the end of the day. Like, no matter what comes our way, you can trust our decision. And we're gamers, too. So we like to play games and we like to do the same things you guys want. And I'm sure everybody at Microsoft who works up the chain doesn't have like billion dollar Bill Gates money. So like, I think it was like showing people like at first, yeah, they probably had the price and was like, okay, we're going to do this because we're seeing our system as being like top notch. Like this is the hub for everybody. So we need to increase our prices, which is, what any other company would do. But then like, I think seeing the backlash or how fans were basically like, we don't have the money to pay for that, you know, but we want to play the games. They were like, okay, let's rethink this. Like we play games too. So let's just backtrack. And so I think they did the right thing and like how they stated it. Like you have to be upfront. Like, yeah, we were wrong. We're sorry. Like, because Mm -hmm. or else the crisis of cyberpunk will happen to you where people are still like kind of iffy about it. Like they they still want to play, but they're still kind of iffy. And then you have the fans that are like, no, I'm not going to play this game anymore just because of how they went about things. So I think Microsoft was smart and okay. did the right thing. That's one take. I happen to think they just have no backbone. What cowards? Come out I, not I, even 24 oh hours God. later and rescind your <laughs> offer? Like I'm not for the price hike, but have a backbone have a little Donald Trump in you, you know, just ignore the haters, go full <laughs> blast head first right into the, you know, I think they folded way too soon. Uh, is But then you see this happening all the so. time. It happened with Sonic the Hedgehog. Everyone complains on Twitter. So That's they take different. his teeth away. That's- Different. And then now this, this is Microsoft. This is Microsoft. People love Team Xbox. Like I feel like they had to do this because it's like they're the bread and butter. Like it's either you're on Team PlayStation or your Xbox or Switch, whatever. You know, you're in your box. Like you like <sighs> you like. I think and they're so cowards. I feel like to earn the fans' trust, they had to do this. Jada, like, what do you my- think about this world of 2021, 2020, where if there's enough people complaining on Twitter, you have to completely change your strategies? What do I think about that? Yeah. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, counterpoint to one of the things Lexi said is, what games does Xbox have? Because they have no games. Um, they if you're have not paying Halo Infinite. Infin- no, they don't. If you're not paying for the Game Pass, you have no games, and none of those games are basically Microsoft if it's not Gears. Um, <laughs> and the old-ass Halos that nobody plays anymore, really. I'm going to have people coming at me for that one. But anyways, um, you know, <laughs> Showing your uh, the fact that, you know, the fallout coming from, you know, businesses, bad business decisions or not properly executed business decisions, I should say, I think it's, you know, part of the world that we're coming into now. Like the world is evolving. Things are going to change. There's we've never had this ability to be as vocal as a group to these developers and publishers and companies in the past like ps2 ps even ps3 days we really didn't have that uh hive mind or mass control of like hey if you screw with us we're not going to play your game anymore that's you know it's very true you know what i mean it's like it's just like how there's that you know 100 top streamers that can make or break a game yeah literally it could be a game that's seven years old and we're like hey we're playing this today and top of the twitch charts and then that company's like whoa okay so we're doing something right i guess that's the so. thing it's hard to judge whether i mean the, the outrage was big you know they had mm-hmm. the right people mad about it but we especially if you operate in the twitter circles and even gaming you know 
where we are on you know reading articles and stuff it's a bubble and it's not a mm -hmm. huge bubble compared to the grand scheme so while they did hear a very vocal minority of gamers i bet you they could have gotten away with it if they oh, 100%. If, if they didn't yeah. fold like little cowards no i think I, and they they it's they have a big enough player base and people who are already locked in and that just set it have it set to auto renew that probably the story probably would have blown over they would have gotten an email a month beforehand telling them like hey your renewal is coming it's five dollars more or whatever the price hike was they would and they're have just, never they wouldn't, noticed they would have either never noticed or they wouldn't have batted an eye at it yep. you know and the my issue with Microsoft trying to come and raise prices is what extra are we getting for you raising the price. Like there it's one thing to nothing. If there's one thing to say, like, hey, uh, costs are going up for doing X, Y, Z, or we're adding this new feature, so we need to increase costs to justify it. There was no justification for increasing the price other than Microsoft being hungry for more money. They did say they hadn't done an increase in over ten years. You know, so a little bit for inflation. You could yeah. throw in there. And in a totally unrelated story, not related in the slightest, uh, Microsoft announced their quarterly results for, uh, let's see, for the results of 2021 and, or the end of last year. Sorry, sorry, of 2020. Yeah. And their gaming revenue was up a whole 51%. Xbox content and service revenue was up 40%. Things like Xbox Live and Game Pass. Mm -hmm. And their hardware sales were up 86% thanks to the launch of the new consoles. So totally unrelated. Um, yeah. <laughs> totally Weird. unrelated. Weird. <laughs> Company making more money than they ever have, trying to increase the price on a service they have not updated that is pretty antiquated. Uh, yep. Just another day in 2021. Yep, it also makes me think of like, what if there's something coming in the near future that's coming to the Xbox or Game Pass or whatever, and that's why they were trying to do it, but they just didn't want to say it. And now it's like, oh, now we just have to do it. <laughs> like, because we might they, they, every, that, you know what I mean? You know, like, going to think of it, like, Microsoft only makes changes when people complain a lot. Like, remember, this mm -hmm. was the online service that was making you pay for Xbox Live to use your Xbox to watch Netflix and stuff. They yep. were, everyone else, everyone else literally had been like, oh, that's. That's dirty. Why, why would anybody do that? Except Xbox. They were like, if we can get yep. away with it, oh, they're onto us. Okay, it's free for everybody, whatever. Yep. So, uh, yep. you know, just be careful with these guys. They're, they're, yeah. they're a little sneaky. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just, just like uh, how it's smart that, you know, game free-to-play games have become free-to-play even if you don't pay for the service. You know, it's on a game-by-game -game basis right now at this point, but I think Microsoft, they said they're making it now so all free-to-play are free-to-play, yeah. which is cool. Um, so, I mean, that's a good ad, ad, but you know, yeah, uh, that's kind of a save our cover our butts back to our favorite streamer, uh, on the show. I'm definitely a uh, tier three sub to him. Ninja is back in the news and love him or hate him. This dude always sparks a conversation. Uh, he was <laughs> being interviewed by the New York times and they started getting into youths and the uh, rampant toxicity uh, that we experience in our video games. Um, I got called the F word today by a 10 year old, just in overwatch. So this is stuff we've <laughs> all dealt with. Everybody who plays an online game has been chewed out and cussed at by a teen, uh, a, a child. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> basically he said uh, he started denying responsibility for being the one that needs to teach the kids who uh, are in his stream about things uh, like white privilege and racism specifically. He said, how does a white kid know he has white privilege if his parents never teach him uh, or don't talk to him about racism? If they're gaming and their first interaction with racism is one of their friends saying the N word, they have no idea what it is. What if it was on my stream? He continued is it my job to have this conversation with the kid? No, because first thing that's going on in my head is this kid's doing this on purpose to troll me. If someone says a racial slur or on someone else's stream, it could potentially get the streamer banned. It's awful, but that's the first thing I think of. And this set the internet on fire. A lot of people started grandstanding all over him. Uh, I feel like that's the thing. Anytime Ninja makes a... Uh, 
any kind of statement that kind of goes against what the hive mind is thinking at the time, better or mm-hmm. worse, he just gets it because he's the lightning rod. He's the poster child. So when he says it, it's yeah. uh, it, it blows up. Uh, I kind of wanted to go round the clock here and just kind of see where people are at on this issue here because I got my thoughts, but I'll go towards the end. Anybody feel strongly about this one? I mean, <laughs> okay. Um, so, so I, uh, it's hard to say. I, uh, I, I kind of agree with Ninja. That was the hardest thing I've had to say today. Wow. Um, <laughs> That's what I was trying to say, but I was like, yeah. so like, it was just, mm, did not want to say it. Um, I agree. It's not his. It's not his or any streamer's responsibility to teach life lessons to people watching their stream. Um, I will say that is what filters are for. I have a freaking essay of words that are filtered f- from my stream, so they don't even show up. So I'm not dealing with seeing that because I don't want to deal with uh, people uh, streaming. Um, and you know, streamers aren't role models. They're they're not. They're there are, peop- there are gamers who get paid to do what they want to do, but that does not make them a role model. Um, it does not make them somebody to look up to. That I should say I shouldn't say it. That doesn't make them that they're not. Their streaming and gaming does not make them a role model. What they do in their rest of their life and how they carry themselves that is what can make them a role model. But it has nothing to do with what they do for their job. With the medium. Exactly. Yeah. You wouldn't, you know, not every doctor or lawyer or uh, police is a role model. That is a gar- that like none of them are. Like that is not a guarantee that they them having that job does not guarantee them to be a role model. Their character and how they carry themselves and how they perform and do what they do that is what can establish them as a role model to the people. That's a good. That point. it's that is my two cents on that. That's a really good point. Yeah. I agree with that. And yeah, it was hard to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly the same. But yeah, he's I think he's right too. Um, I I've seen some of the comments people are saying, like backlash from him. And I'm just like, like from their lens, I can see why they're upset. But at the end of the day, it's not his, he's not the parent, like it's not his responsibility. Like you have to think of it in the way, like I feel like that side has to think of it like if we're playing a game or whatever, and it's a multiplayer game, and you're playing with somebody, and a kid comes on. Are you gonna tell them to be quiet or whatever, or just like mute them or whatever? Like that's your choice. If you decide to be like the authority leader to say like, "Hey, you shouldn't be saying that," but like that's not everybody's like decision. Like somebody else might be like, "Whatever," or somebody else might laugh at it or whatever. But at the end of the day, it's the parent's job to teach the child like what's wrong and what's right and to be monitoring their own children of what they're doing Mm -hmm. and knowing like hey like are you playing like this rated blog game or are you like saying these words there's several times in my games i hear like a parent like this is rare but i hear parents they'll come into the room or whatever and be like what are you doing? What did you just say? <laughs> you said, wait! And like the kid will just shut down. Like it'll be like a whole lobby of people and the kid will be like, you blah, blah, blah. And then the parent comes in, what did you say? And just the kid's quiet and everybody on the mic is laughing or something. Mm-hmm. Like that's your responsibility as a parent yep. to be like on your kid. Like, okay, I know Billy is playing right now at nine o'clock like listening what is he saying who is he talking mm-hmm. to especially underage kids you should that's your responsibility as a parent now you give them more freedom and trust by how the child you know does but th- that's your responsibility as a parent at the end of the day to teach your child like what's wrong or right what not to mm-hmm. say what's racist what's you know like you supposed to be teaching your child that and ingraining that in them to like instill that throughout their life not somebody else now yeah i I agree with you about like you have your mentors and everything but it's how they carry themselves in their real life like it's not Mm -hmm. oh it's the streamer they're like godly to me or whatever no it's like did they inspire you like outside of this 
framework? What are they doing yeah. to the community? What are they doing to for the world to help bring back something? Yeah, or I, back yeah. Or I saw the sentiment from a lot of people where, and it seemed like a lot of like partnered streamers who weren't anywhere near like a ninja were really the ones going in on them hard and taking that, you know, um, uh, getting on that soapbox and really feeling themselves. We are influencers. What we do is we're supposed to influence and all this. And that just rubbed me so the wrong way because yeah. I feel like we got to separate our entertainment and our entertainers from these, these grandstanding moments and stuff, because you know, there's, what am I trying to say? Skip? Why, why does this upset me so much? You have a kid and you don't want your daughter to be, in that predicament when she gets older, Corey, and, and you care about it. I think that's, that's it. I want to hear Skip as a parent, you know. You know, I, I see mm -hmm. Skip with his kids, and, you know, they're so good. So I know he's got the finger on the pulse here. <laughs> so what? What? why are these streamers attacking Ninja saying, yes, you do need to take on this responsibility? Where does that come from? I think a lot of people honestly do feel strong about it. You know, pe people want positivity. I think, I think you know, en enough of the the top streamers deal with, you know, a lot of toxicity themselves in one way or another and need a lot of help from mods and other things, you know, to shield themselves from it. Pe I, I think overall people generally do want good things. I think a few other things kind of also come up, you know, whether people are trying to use the opportunity to grandstand or, you know, highlight themselves as part of the, you know, solution. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, you, you don't you don't always have you don't have to do that if if you've been acting in a, accordingly, then you are. Um, but I agree. You know, I don't leave it. I don't leave it up to anybody else to teach my kids, you know, uh -huh. you know, what, what what you know, what's what's expected of them and and how to be good people. And, you know, who to listen to for, you know, certain things or whatever. I, I, I'm that example for them, you know, and I don't leave it up to anyone else. Now, I do prescribe to kind of some of what y'all were talking about, how it is nice if we can all do it together, because the more people that contribute to that type of positivity, uh -huh. um, you know, it, it does make it, you know, better for all of us. But no, it doesn't. It can't fall on. It can't fall on, on one person, even if it's the most notarized yeah. person. It, it can't. It's not fair. And. Uh, beyond that, it's it's unrealistic. So ultimately, it should always fall on the people who are responsible for the kid first and foremost. Uh -huh. And you know, and then past that, let's hope every you know everybody's doing their part. But to have that expectation is is wild. And I don't see how it helps to come down on anyone either. Yep. Like, what what good does does that do for the for the community? It, Obviously, it doesn't do anything good for Ninja, but the community as a whole, it just seems like it's its own type of toxicity. Again, you know, kind of pushing us in the in the opposite direction that we don't really want to go. I've only yeah. been a parent for, you know, uh, seven or eight months now, and <laughs> I already am starting to get that, like, when I see a lot of people who are taking the most fiercest of opinions on either side of it who don't have kids – Oh, I'm yeah. already kind of rolling my eyes a little bit and be like, wait till you get to the game before you start. Like right now you're just being a, what, what is that? A backseat driver. Yeah. You're backseat driving a little bit. You don't fully understand. We've all been kids. I kind of understand mm -hmm. that. Yeah. You know, we do. And, and that's the thing. Ninja's so squeaky clean. If you watch his damn stream, like he's not doing anything outrageous. And that's kind of yeah. what his retort was. Cause he, uh, came back and he said, uh, let me see. It's not my job to sit down and make a video with all my audiences and do a lesson on civil rights and how not to be a racist. I show that I'm good uh, through my personal actions, how I treat people and those around me every single day, which yep. is the response. Exactly. Like if, if, That's if as, as a young parent, you know, like it's fully my intent. I don't want Ninja or any entertainer, you know, to be the one that is in a position to teach my daughter about something so intense because that means I have failed. Like mm -hmm. that's that's our job. And, and because it's intricate. It's not simple. It's not, you know it's not. It's it's a very detailed thing and every kid learns different and there's different it's, And it's evolving. It's constantly yeah. evolving. What is correct today was not correct five years ago, ten years ago, twenty, fifty, hundred, three hundred years ago. You know, it's it's 
it changes. It's a thing that changes and evolves with time. And the last thing I'll say is, you know, I think of streamers as like D list actors. You know what I mean? <laughs> you're not <laughs> like you're not gonna go and look at this D list actor and just based on their roles that they perf- they've they have performed in movies and like that's my role model. Like, you know, like Robert Downey Jr., great actor. Probably not the best role model based on his <laughs> past, you know? And that's just somebody, that's just one off the top of my head. But, you know, you can look at everybody, you know, um, what's his name um, that just went to uh, uh, Mulaney, John Mulaney, you know, just, you know, checked into rehab and stuff like that. And I, I thought that guy was squeaky clean. Yeah. But you can't tell. You can't, you do not know what a person's personal life and how they how they behave and how they treat other people and how much of a role model they are based on their screen persona. That is an entertainment face that they put on to draw a crowd and make the money. That is literally what there is literally their job to have that persona. I don't know if people are thinking like, because I just thought of this when Skip was talking um, from my past experience, because I was raised by my great grandma. And so like, She's old school. (laughs) And so like, she doesn't understand, especially when I was growing up, like she didn't understand like the gaming space at all. She just was like, play your game, do your homework, do what's right. I'll beat your butt if you don't, you know, like, you know, with the belt and all that stuff, we're not going to get into that. (laughs) But she didn't understand like the gaming space and stuff at the time. And at the time, like, when there was dial up and you have aim and your chats and stuff. Again, my great grandma raised me. So she doesn't know like what I'm doing, who I'm talking to, blah, 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 you know? So I'm trying to think in that perspective, like Mm. these people are role models to kids like that. You see what I mean? In that light, because it's like, they don't have anybody else at the moment. That's a role model per se. So they're Mm. looking up to, the people they're seeing and the personas they're seeing online. So they're like, okay, this is who I see. I see Ninja. I really like him. He plays the games I play. He cares about the things I care about. And he's somebody I can relate to that isn't a family member or somebody like I might not have that family member in my life to give me that. So now I'm like rethinking, like I can see like people like that because there are a lot of people that are like that. For sure. Are looking up to people in that who way, yeah. And so then that's kind of hard to say. Like, besides the people who you know, you know who who are with parents or, or with people t- caretakers who are out of touch, there's a lot of people out there who just have parents that aren't there. You know, so that that's yep. a sad yeah, reality is that they're not all you know skips yeah. and and Corys who are you know gonna really put that love and attention into teaching the kids right from wrong. And, you know, but that is all it's its own entity had nothing. It wasn't caused by Ninja and he shouldn't Mm -hmm. be the one who's got his feet against the fire to fix it. There's systems in place. There's an education system. There's, you know, there's a lot of things that we have correction that we have to help, you know, guide people towards what's right when they don't have those situations, but that's not Ninja. I think it just puts in perspective. I think it just puts in perspective, like if you are a streamer or if you are like a big or upcoming big name or whatever, like to just reflect back on your life and make sure like you are doing things that you can bestly do, like especially for the community, just thinking on that aspect, like you don't you want to be the best you can be for other kids Mm -hmm. and stuff out there, you know. So I think that's just a rule of thumb, like moving forward, people should have like in the back of the, it's not their responsibility, but it, it's something that you care about and passionate about. Like just thinking like, oh, somebody might look up to me or whatever. Like, I don't know. So yeah. next story, we'll move on from this one because we have some good top, man, this is a really loaded <laughs> week. I told you guys yep. like this, there wasn't many crazy stories, but there's like really conversation driving like this one coming from our, our best friends uh, at cyberpunk 2077, who've apparently said, Hey, it's fine to have sex as Keanu Reeves, but <laughs> in our game, you cannot have sex with Keanu Reeves. Because, you know, if you've played with mods in a game, it's probably because you wanted to see boobs. I'm just going to take a guess. I mean, everybody who plays with mods started off probably with a nudie mod in Skyrim or Fallout or something. So it's just hand in hand. You can't have one without the other. I'm sorry. Uh, I was I, I turned myself into Link and I was adventuring around Skyrim as Link. 
with uh, Bleach music because Bleach was, you know, the thing at the time. With no pants on, I'm sure. Just, <laughs> just free balling it all over well, Hyrule. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, technically, the Link does wear tights. Those aren't really pants. So, yes, you are kind of right. But... Mm -hmm. <laughs> But the point is, there's a lot of filthy birds out there who like to put weird mods in games, and uh, Cyberpunk was not immune. Basically, uh, Cyberpunk 2077 had an issue because people, they what they did is they took the model of Keanu Reeves, swapped it to a character that you can have sexual relations mm -hmm. with, and then it made it look like you were banging Keanu. Uh, Which is a super easy thing to do <laughs> mod wise talking from experience jada have you uh... no i just from game design from a game design ah, yeah, standpoint yeah, yeah, it's really sure. easy to, to move a character model onto another character model like that's <laughs> You notice Kyle is missing from this show, our, our other resident modder. Why do you think he's missing, huh? <laughs> he saw the notes and he was like, nah, I can't catch this one. He's trying no, to he's counter. Probably playing that mod. He's trying to fix the mod. He's like, they took away my mod. I got it. So Cyberpunk 2077 creator CD Projekt Red would kindly like modders to stop making Keanu Reeves into a sex object. Following a fan mod that mm -hmm. allowed players to have sex with him, uh, his character Johnny Silverhand, the developer uh, said that user-generated content cannot be harmful towards others, especially when it comes to mods in the case of model swaps uh, that involve explicit situations. It can be perceived as such by the people who lent their appearance for the purpose of creating characters in Cyberpunk. Uh, it's worth noting that Reeves' character does have an in-game sex scene, and you play it out from his perspective. Uh, so the player is having sex with a blonde woman who inexplicably dumps uh, good liquor all over him. Like it's a naughty scene. It's a very naughty scene. So that's where the confusion comes in. I understand it. It's weird uh, when you put a face to it, you know, like if it's a real person, I'm sure he doesn't want to see that. Um, so I'm for the ban, but it is yeah. a little weird that that's in the same game he has play. an explicit sex scene and then they go through and they balance out where you can't have sex with the dude. I'm pretty sure Keanu doesn't care. Uh, I'm pretty sure he's probably thankful for this because of all the dirty messages and stuff he gets. This is an outlet for people to maybe leave him alone. Um, that would be my prediction. But I would go, oh my god. Um... I um so a Keanu's is one of those you know really nice people like that like is true to like his public persona like based on what you know multiple multiple everything um but um the big thing is, is it's a it's a matter of preserving his persona and his public image and when you go and start changing things and doing different things to his model that he didn't agree to to be in the game that not only tarnishes his reputation but that tarnishes the game the gaming world's reputation because think about it like if uh other actors that were big actors were, were signing on to do a role in a game and have their likeness portrayed like that they may be scared away and not want to do that like you know if we like let's say we got if they we got a, a new avengers game you know what I mean? And like Samuel L. Jackson was signed on to actually come back and do Nick Fury in the freaking game likeness and all. And then modders went in and did stuff like like that wouldn't be cool. But it's it's kind of an, a, a character assassination type of thing. Yeah. Not like to that not that extreme, but it definitely can hinder those relationships between uh, gaming and other mediums. Yeah, I can see that. I also think this is more of just a, a Keanu Reeves story. Like, oh, I agree. I've never heard I mean, of this before. There's been plenty of actors in video games, but it's just because the world has Keanu fever that this was probably true. even a thing. Like, you didn't see this happening with Kevin Spacey when he was in the Call of Duty game. You know, easily could have, but they didn't well, do it. Well, I mean, I mean there's, there's probably a bunch of reasons for that, actually. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of reasons in hindsight for that. actually there's yeah he probably wouldn't have minded so much <laughs> he's probably working on the mod himself <laughs> oh man uh, what's the lesson here skip what what are, what are we learning from uh from this story if anything it's possible we give us the, give us the wholesome give us the wholesome answer skip please 
Yeah, please. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if there really is a wholesome one. I mean, people are having sex with Keanu Reeves <laughs> in a video game. I don't know if I can really reel that one back in, but it, I mean, you know, if we're going to boil it down to anything, it's respect. And I know that uh-huh. disrespect is a, you know, a humorous topic and point within gaming and whatnot. And we get it. You know, we're the rebellious mm-hmm. ones and we're the ones, you know, that were turned, you know, turned away and cast aside and all that. So we have this rebellious spirit, but it, do, it does come back to the thing that you're talking about. Part, part of what keeps video games and, you know, as a, as, as a healthy industry and starts bringing in more acceptance from other people and more understanding from other sides is people out, you know, outside of it coming in and doing roles like Keanu Reeves, like Norman Reedus and all those mm-hmm. other types of people. So. Um, oh, for it's a better look for us to come off, you know, more respectful in this case and keep that good fortune and that goodwill um, coming our way. So more and more opportunities can, can can continue to open up because, you know, like some of us talk about the gaming industry isn't just the gamers power to the people. You know, we are the pillars, but, you know, we have the game developers and voice actresses and actors and and whatnot. And um, we need to continue to make sure that that they can get gigs and do their best to make those games that we do buy and play the best that they can and continue to bring in larger names and um, continue to, to grow the gaming community. Because as big as it is and as much money that it makes, there's still much more opportunities um, and levels to, for it to get to that we haven't attained yet. So let's let's keep it on up and up this was the game developer who had to put out a patch to remove like 30 percent of their dildos you know so it was <laughs> and and to their credit they didn't even say stop doing these type of mods they just said stop doing them with people who actually exist so i think mm-hmm. as far as like messaging goes from a company to the people they did it as nicely and as like respectful as possible because they're like they know this is going to happen but they're like yep. it's just not right to do it when it's a real person and i think that's really good i think that was a, a good move from them and you can't fight it uh you know but it, it, it's a good it's a good look for them and they needed a good look uh mm-hmm. the last story we have everyone has heard of there's no way you could have possibly avoided this it's been all over the news it's been all over every single social media platform. Uh, I'm sick of it already, and I don't even understand it. That's why we have some specialists like Lexi here who's going to explain the entire stock market and cryptocurrency. <laughs> she's she's going to explain it. <laughs> Basically what happened is GameStop stock surged by like a million uh, because of a Reddit community named Wall Street Bets. To my understanding... This is just going to be the rough understanding, and then I'll let everyone else correct me. Uh, hedge funds, who are the billion-dollar enemy, that's what I've been told, I don't, the the Bruce Waynes of the world, uh, bet against companies' stock. Like, they're going to fail. So they profit off of companies failing, from what I understand. And what this Wall Street Bets was doing was like, hey, there's a lot of us. If we all buy stocks and make these companies not fail, they lose their bet and we get the money. And that's what they did. And I guess it worked because yep. it shook a lot of like people down. It, and it mm-hmm. actually was caused by this Robin Hood generation, which uh, Robin Hood kind of uh, disrupted the stock market. I have a Robin Hood account. I trade on it casually uh and basically it makes it where it's free to trade they just are putting the power into the hands of the player power to the players and that's what everyone started doing and then they started coming together in these reddit communities and flipping things over and then robin hood's investors apparently who had money in these head funds hedge funds were like oh shit we got to do something about this it's too volatile and they shut down the market so this movement was essentially quashed, you know, because one of the traders came out and said, you can't buy these stocks anymore, which makes it look extremely rigged towards the businesses. So, uh, 
I mean, Wall Street's already pretty damn rigged to begin with, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know, it's one of those things we've always said. I know I've always said, you know, you always hear it around. Mm -hmm. Wall Street's rigged. You know, the, the, the people, they make their money. It's corporate. Corporations, brother. You know, you hit, you smoke your joint, you pass it to your homie, and you just talk about the man holding you down. This is one of the first times, like, I feel like in broad daylight, the man came out and shot somebody. And you're like, holy <laughs> shit, it's real. <laughs> the man really is trying oh, to get us. Goodness. Oh my goodness! In broad daylight, yeah. in front of all yeah. of our faces, and yeah. you know, with cameras, with cameras on and recording, yeah. an Eric Andre show skit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. So, yeah. Lexi, how did this affect you? Were you buying any of these stocks? Like, when did you become aware of it? I'm just kind of curious your experience with it because I know you've been following it closely. So I had a 4 a.m. morning and saw like everything trending I was like what is going on <laughs> so I had to check it out I've been keeping up with the story I did not buy any into this because one um, I don't know if a lot of people understand stocks but you get like one like I'll say a penny like you get a penny a percentage essentially of that stock depending on how much you invest so it's not like, say, for instance, you invest like $200, like that $200 is distributed by how many like percentage that stock is worth, if that makes sense. So that's your return in stock. It's really hard to explain. I know people's put out those videos. Like, I uh -huh. wish somebody would just put out a video that's like layman's terms. Like, if you have four bananas <laughs> and you invest those, you know, get six lemons. You know, like I'm serious because I feel like especially yeah. our generation does not do not understand like fully um, the importance yeah. of stock, and it's important because you should be investing. Um, don't just invest on random stuff. You should do your research and stuff, but you should be investing because if you're if you're putting money into a savings account right now, it's just sitting there doing yeah. nothing. It's just sitting there. But if you're putting that money that's in the savings account into an investment, it's growing your money. And so at the end of the day, you want your money to be growing. Even if it's a side hustle and you put a little bit into investment, that money's going to grow depending on, again, what you invest in. So yeah, I was following the story and I was like, I'm not gonna put anything into this because the game, like, again, I follow a lot of stocks. So the GameStop stock was worth like, I think it was 17.3 or something like that percent before all this stuff happened. So that wasn't great and it wasn't bad either. But when this happened, it shot up, right? You don't want to invest in something like this when it shoots up, like in this case. The yep. reason being is if you look in the past months or if you look in the past year or so and you see around this time, the same year, what was the stock at? If it was still at that same minimal, like that's how much your return will be eventually when this crashes back down. So you don't yep. want to invest in it now. Now, if you now are new... There is, you could invest in it now and it could keep going up, but that's a risk that you have to take. Mm -hmm. But you have to really look into <laughs> like these things. And the easiest way that I would tell somebody to do this is say, for instance, I wanted to invest in Disney stock. Disney has Marvel, right? I'm huge into Marvel. I know Marvel has all these movies going on. I, I have invested into Disney like, $20. <laughs> I haven't even invested how much I would like to invest. The reason being is because I literally Google, and this is an easy thing anybody can do, Disney stock. The first thing that pops up on Google is like a chart. That's the chart that you need to look at. And you go back like a year, you go back five months, you see where that stock was and where it was at its high. And then you determine from that, like, how much can I invest into this that would make me X, Y, Z, like $2,000, $3,000. At that point, that's when you figure out how to invest into your stock. But again, like it's a complicated thing. There's apps like Corey said, like I have Stash. I think I'm gonna switch over to a different app. But yeah, I didn't invest into the GameStop stock because I knew it, it might fall. 
just because not a lot of people are going to GameStop right now. What are yeah. people doing? They're buying stuff on Steam. They're buying mm-hmm. stuff digitally. Like mm-hmm. they're the buying game- stuff from Humble Bundle or yep. whoever. Like there's all these online sales. Yeah, I I went to GameStop like a couple of weeks ago, but I what did I buy? Some figurines, <laughs> some yeah. big pins. Like I didn't buy a game. Where where am I buying my games from digitally right now? Because yeah. it's so simple to do. Like, mm-hmm. you know, so I know that eventually it'll fall again and nobody's yeah. going to GameStop right now because of everything that's going on with the pandemic. So it's just keeping mindfulness like of that kind of stuff, like real life stuff and like going back to see where was it in the past, basically. So that's my two cents on the GameStop thing. I would have invested if I saw like, oh, like everything's opening up again and blah, blah, blah. Like movie theaters. That's just a hint to people. You could. Yeah. Well, that was one of the ones that mm-hmm. people were investing big in. The other one yeah. besides GameStop was AMC. Was AMC, that. yeah, because uh, a lot of them are, a lot of them are, you know, filing for bankruptcy. You talking, Corey? I lost, I lost audio for a second. Oh yeah, I'm here. Okay, there we go. What okay, about cool. uh, you, Skip? Are you uh, in the market? Uh, and have you? Uh, are you a Robinhood trader? No, nah, not a Robin Hood trader. Uh, I do it old school and actually get with uh, get with uh, some people, you know what I'm saying, and talk. My buddy Bart, he's big into all that stuff, crypto and all these other things. So that's that's, that's mm-hmm. how I that's how I approach it. Um, but I mean, we, we kind of knew, you know, what what this was overall. My like the highlight of this is really. You know, every the machine is the machine and it's not going to stop. It's going to be what it is. We learn how to live with it. But every now and then when the little guy, you know, takes a swing and catches the machine right on the chin, you know, Uh we get to kick it back to the people that, you know, took advantage of us in the housing market when that crashed and all those other things. Like when Uh we when we when we get to connect on one of those haymakers, I feel good about that. And that's what that represented more than more than anything for me the hackers ha- the hackers hacked the matrix they beat the system the didn't like it the system yeah. was rigged against us we got the internet now we're able to come back on them and now they counter corrected and it was kind of funny because uh robin hood was built you know to put the power into the hands of the everyman like this was what robin mm-hmm. hood was about that's why they call it robin hood take from the rich give to the poor type of deal and mm-hmm. they had, a, you know, a tweet that was out like when they first launched that just said, let the people trade. And then this starts happening. They get and their they nuts it. squeezed. And what do they do? The first thing they do. All right. We can't let the people trade the things that are going to hurt our investors. And uh, I, I'm, I, I think I, I have a Robin Hood account. I'm pretty well invested in it. See, I, I'm I'm more in it than I let on, but I'm not very smart. So I don't feel comfortable talking about it, but I have like my work ones, the ones that I take seriously, my retirements, you know, the 401k that I have all diversified and invested in things that I have a lot of Disney and I have Google and stuff like that because those are companies I believe are the future. I have a Robin hood one that is just for fun. And I started with a certain amount and it made money. And then I put it in other places. And when that, if I lose it all, I lose it all. Like it's, I'm playing with the house's money on this one. So I did after the trend, I, I'd been looking at Blackberry for a while as just a, you know, a good investment because they signed a, a contract with Amazon. There's a reason uh-huh. the president of the United States uses Blackberry. It's because they have the most secure system. They're very, you know, their cybersecurity is better than anything. So uh, there's speculation that they're going to be getting into like autonomous cars. You know, that's going to be the reason that uh, someone can't hack into your car and run you off the freeway. You know, there's going to be like very important security and things. And I think Blackberry might be that company. So when I saw this happening, I saw the price was still not outrageous yet. I thought, okay, I'll throw down on some of this one. You know, let's stick it to the man. I'll get in on this Reddit thing. And I threw in, you know, a sizable amount of money. Robin Hood took my money. It was like, okay, we'll fulfill your order in the morning, bro. And then when I woke up in the morning, I saw that they sure took my money, gave me the shares, but wouldn't let anyone buy anymore and only allow you to sell. The whole way this thing works is to buy. If you sell, every all the people are losing their money. So the fact that they yep. like 
didn't just disable it totally and still made it to where you could lose was pretty, it kind of pissed me off. And then when I started start seeing the stuff about the clash action lawsuit, I was like, yeah, cause actually why would you take my money like that? The night of knowing full well what you were going to do the next morning. Mm-hmm. So I'm a little pissed. I'm a little pissed. I would be too. Uh, the do- and then and then just because everybody's talking about finances, Dogecoin rose like 800 percent, and mm-hmm. I got in on it. Like Dogecoin. Dogecoin is a crypto Explain that's a, that it's a total meme, and I got in on it like three memes ago when it was worth point zero 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 or point zero zero four of a penny, and yep. I pulled up my phone and it was like up to six cents. And I had made like five hundred bucks. Yep. <laughs> what? Yeah. Buy low. Buy yeah. low. When it, yeah. When they're that low. Yeah. Like, it's, like it's, Bitcoin. It's, it's like, like Bitcoin. It's yeah. It trades kind of the same way. You know, you buy it. If a bunch of people get it, it's worth more. And mm-hmm. so I'm like, yeah, guys, if you want to keep investing in Dogecoin, please let's get it to a dollar. Mm. But the, <laughs> the whole thing to remember <laughs> with the stock thing for all for everybody is you don't make money until you sell the stock. It's just mm-hmm. fictional money. And eventually everybody's going to get that when they're going to want to sell and you can't all yep. sell at the same time. So there's yep. going to be losers. Like, you know, as much as you yep. want to get on this, there's the, it's the law of averages that it's just going to bite you in the ass every single time. So I see everybody on Twitter giving financial advice when they're nowhere near, you know, qualified to, you know, trying to ramp people up diamond hands, hold everybody hold. You're a bitch. If you don't hold, Hey, if you need the money and you're up, and you know you got bills to pay mouse to feed sell don't let Mm -hmm. kefri don't let any twitch streamer especially tell you what to do how to live your life or to do these investments don't try and get rich quick that would be the best advice anybody you talk to who's been in the market seriously for any amount of time will tell you that it's not a get rich quick scheme time in the market is way more valuable so Mm -hmm. you know Pick companies, be smart, think about the future, listen to, to specialists, and uh, we'll just see how this one rides out. It's going to be a yeah. wild ride. I, I think that this could expose some stuff, and hopefully it all flattens out and we can get back to uh, normalcy, but or, uh, or better than normal, we should say. But that's it. That's our show. It was a banger of a show. We had so much to talk about. Uh, let's go around. Oh, hold on. You know what? We're not done yet. Because we're going to do Curtis's Comic Book Corner because we got gypped last week. I ended the music. And the reason I want to is because Skip got me involved in this comic book. It's a little known one. I feel like I'm on the cutting edge of the comic book world because I read this thing. So we need to talk about it. But Skip, let's talk about Curtis's Comic Book Corner where we're talking about firepower. Indeed, firepower. We'll do an abbreviated one. We'll do one where we dive into things a little bit more, kind of like we used to before. But we did have a long, good show, so we don't want to hold you all too much longer. But uh, to give you the quick pitch, firepower. What happens when a, an, an ancient, the ancient uh, art of throwing fireballs is lost to the world, and in comes this fervent, quick learning guy, really just looking for answers for his family chases uh traces some of those back to this ancient temple in the mountains and this interesting sensei and discovers that he is the one that has the firepower and now everybody all of the different clans and whatnot in the martial arts world are after him because he is uh a commodity he is a a huge asset to anybody that can bring him over to his team uh, a, a quick, a easy way for everybody to get in this. Anybody who who is interested in uh, like The Walking Dead, it is Robert Kirkman, who is the writer. Um, f- Robert Kirkman from The Walking Dead comic book. Uh, Chris Samney is on the art. The art is amazing. A uh, buddy of mine, Matt Wilson, is on the colors. He has so many many styles and colors. Books uh, as crazy and wild as the current Thor with Donny Cates on over to uh this this book uh firepower uh co- w- one thing that drew me into it one i've been into martial arts since i was younger and i don't practice like i used to now but it was really easy and then two super into kung fu movies along that those times too so that jumped me in 
something that I that I wanted. The, one of the reasons why I threw it over to Corey is because we both have an appreciation for sneakers, and there yeah. is some sneaker culture <laughs> stuff going on in this. So I kicked it over to Corey. Now, Corey, we know I, I talked a little bit about how we got uh, Owen. Owen is the protagonist, the one who has the firepower, the one who has a family history that he's a little foggy on because he he was adopted and he's trying to tra trace it back. As as the journey got started and and we follow this protagonist up into that that temple that was in the mountains, what were some of your kind of thoughts uh, about, about the book and, and kind of seeing that journey? I dug it a lot. So one thing to... Uh to brag on when you're talking about the colors and the art is that when they go to the uh when he goes to the like monastery everyone has like shaved heads and stuff and the art style isn't like super photorealistic so they had to do a bunch of really uh, uh, other clever little things to make sure you can differentiate characters from one another because for me i would especially towards the beginning get stuck looking at a panel and be like okay who was that one again which guy was this and then you start kind of picking up on their like little um, little tiny intricacies of the face it faces in the in the art. So I really like that. And then just the characters are awesome. Like the the master, you know, for for the place. When you're talking about sneaker culture, he's like the super old dude who's got like dressed better than everybody. He's rocking the Jordan ones. And he's super funny. Like in he, when he, the first thing he wants to do when the guy gets there is go through his phone to see what new music is on there because he doesn't <laughs> get music up there. So uh, it, it's kind of cool to see he was for the culture. And then, uh, like you had said, the the main protagonist guy, he's just super likable, and you could tell, you know, like in the fight scenes, he they make a point to show like him learning on the fly. So when he gets caught with something, he doesn't get caught twice because, you know, he learned the movements and could do. And like you said, I've been like on this huge Kung Fu kick. Uh, I've been rewatching. I, I just watched all the Ip Man movies on Netflix. Yeah. I'm going watching all the blade movies because I basically consider those Kung Fu movies. Corey, yeah. we are on the save wave life. I just literally rewatched all the blade yeah. movies last weekend. Yeah. They're on HBO now. Like <laughs> yeah. it's, they're so nope. why they're, it's such good movie. I, those are the original Marvel. That's why we have, you could thank Wesley mm -hmm. Snipes for all yep. the Marvel we have today. But yeah, all that to say that like, this is a, a really, really good book and an original story. Like I felt like I, it, it was new. Everything was a, a brand new world to me. And uh, that's kind of what I like about it most. Absolutely. Uh, th and that's the thing. What, it, like I said, it, it's it, it can even be a family book. There's not a lot of crazy, you know, kind of out there or more uh, adult type themes and things into it. It's a family story. It's a bit of a love story. There's well-balanced action. The art um, is 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 easy on the eyes. Um, it's an easy read, too, because Chris Samney is such a visual storyteller. So there's often panels where there aren't a lot of words and you just use your eyes to kind of go through a lot. So although it's um, a trade paperback, which would usually be the equivalent about between four and six comics, it reads through almost like it's just a comic and a half. But you don't feel cheated. There's plenty of story within it. The colors are done very well. Um, it's just really, really easy to get to. And this is the prelude. So you go through this story to have Owen go to the temple. Um, he get, he finds his his sensei. He sees who his friends are. He earns the respect of the people that aren't really into him. He has an arch nemesis there. He also fall, falls in love there. Don't want to give too much away because something happens with that. And then finally, the arch uh, enemies or the sworn enemies, the rivals of the Flaming Fist, uh, the Temple of the Flaming Fist, that's the name of the temple, the Scorched Earth Clan, who are their rivals, they play their role. They come up. An attack happens on the temple. Owen, you know, reaches into a place he didn't know he had and uses the fire power and everybody discovers that he has it. But from there, a bunch of different things happen. He kind of spends the time that he needed to at the temple. He finds out a little bit more about his family, but still not enough. So the journey continues. And then we do get a time jump to 15 years later where he's back, uh, you know, in the normal world, suburban life, has a family and everything. But you see that his past has followed him you know, to his home. And that's really the beginning of the story. That's where we stop in the prelude in this version. And then we go to issue number one. And each one of them 
It's just paced so perfectly. Like I said, really easy to read through. You can do it with your family or even if you are an adult or a kid, all languages are well. I mean, all ages. I said languages. <laughs> all <laughs> ages too. are well. Them Those too. two. Yeah, we don't. Them two. Name. Bring them into. Um, but I do think it's a really cool book for um, people to, to dive into. It's not um, Marvel or DC. So it is an indie book where we get to focus on just the story and we don't have to worry about so many years. Of this continuity <laughs> it gets exhausting, man. You know, in the, in the post show, we'll talk about WandaVision because that was on our, our docket. So if you're, uh, you know, listening to the podcast and you want to get some of those extra little tidbits, you can watch us live on twitch.tv slash video game underscore bang. Uh, yeah, we'll do our little Wanda division review and just to say too that prelude to me as far as what you get is in storytelling it's meaty like it has a clear beginning and a, like a, a full middle and then an amazing ending like if if they turn firepower into uh a tv series you easily mm -hmm. get a first full season in that prelude like there's so much For going sure. on you do not feel cheated it's a lot of content and uh i kind of thought it was a one-off I did not even when I read it top to bottom and I saw a little like before I got to the catch, you know, the, you know, the, the after the credit scenes in the comic, I was like, damn, story told good shit. But then they go do the time jump and uh, I'm two issues into the current story. And like you said, yeah, number two, there was like three lines of dialogue. The whole thing was visual storytelling. And it was an, like this really intricate fight scene that, you know, has all these little things and sides going on to it that was just amazing to read. So, yeah, you don't even have to, you know, worry about it being a huge time suck because it's just so much of it's told visually. So thank you for bringing that one into my life. I'm looking forward. We will continue on just in our comic book corner talking about this series and others. Uh, but that's our show. We've done it. Uh, good job, everybody. GG's. Uh, well played. Uh, where can people <laughs> follow all the cool stuff you are working on, Jada? Because you got some stuff. You actually took us. I don't know. I, I didn't. You didn't have me sign an NDA, so screw you. I got to see <laughs> your D and D like campaign, and some people yep. pull out a piece of paper and they draw a map. You went into a, a creator and made an, a digital world with trap doors and it's basically a video game uh when can mm -hmm. people start seeing this because you said you might start streaming the development yeah so um i am uh, you can find me at twitch tv tw twitch.tv backslash jade arena j-a-d-a-r-i-n-a -A um you can follow me on twitter uh jada underscore arena um, I'm probably, I'm considering starting to stream the actual live sessions, uh, of the D&D campaign that I'm currently running. It's a, uh, complete homebrew story mechanics, um, uh, systems that I've all built from the ground that aren't, um, from any D&D book or module. There's some, there's a lot of, you know, I use a lot of monsters and other things that are pulled from the books, but, um, a lot of everything is hundred percent me. Um, but yeah, we'll probably be streaming that, uh, start streaming those sessions. We uh, generally play Wednesdays from 6 to 9 p.m. Pacific timing. Sweet. So. All right. Looking forward to that one. Lexi, PR specialist extraordinaire. What do you got on the horizon <laughs> for you? Um, well, I've been quite busy lately, so I haven't got to stream this past week. I know I've been trying to stream at least once a week. Um, but this week, hopefully, I'll get to stream. So if you guys want to watch, it's X Space Minty X. And then you can always follow me on Twitter. I nerd out to Disney Plus and WandaVision <laughs> action and anything Marvel. So you guys can see my corny tweets there. And that's Lexi JPR. So, yeah. All righty. And Skip, what you got, man? What you been working on? I'm still writing away, working on a music project too. Still, I feel like, and I actually did get a really cool opportunity that I won't, I won't talk about now. Maybe I'll talk about it a little bit in the after show. But um, it was cool just to be considered for this thing, and it was uh, from a, a creator, director, and writer producer that I've enjoyed their work from when I was really young, and hey. uh, so awesome. it was really encouraging for me to hey. just continue to kind of keep writing and. You know, and, and, and it's not that I didn't get it. I'm not sure I'm waiting, but uh, but that was really cool. But uh, most of my stuff, I've kind of been off the grid and offline because I've been working so much and just spending a lot of time with my family. So yeah, just come here and check me out on Video Game Bang. I like Let's to go. be here every week talking to 
all my peeps about all the stuff (laughs) (laughs) for myself you can find me on uh, all the various platforms at what's up pizzas i don't stream anymore i'm a retired streamer however i do tweet and do instagrams and stuff so you could go there and take a look at my cute dog uh just kind of keep up with the things i'm doing i had a big week at work i had my first talent signing uh, for SF Shock, we got a, our first content creator ever. Uh, I got to be in all the meetings. I got to help do the contracts. Like I'm a big boy now, so I felt That's really awesome. happy. Um, <laughs> soup to nuts, as I like to say, because not only did I do all that, then we had to come up with how we were going to create it. And so I was an actor in the thing. You know, we did some like uh, uh, what is that called, machinima, where you go in the game and film some stuff mm-hmm. uh, for the announcement. And then the announcement went super well. I haven't had anxiety in a long time, and the night before. The thing like i was having palpitations like i was kind of freaking out and uh it all went so good and so uh thank you to all the shock fans anybody who's in that overwatch community uh and gave us uh, the positive reception because that stuff helps man like i I probably would have had a mental breakdown if it didn't go well unfortunately but it did it went well and there's another huge announcement i have for work coming up next week so stay tuned at sf shock uh, if you're Overwatch League fan, Overwatch stuff, it's uh, it, this is big news. This is bigger somehow. If you t- if you want to believe it, it's bigger than the news we had this last week when we signed uh, our first content creator, Emom. So uh, uh, stay tuned. That's it. That's the show. Thanks everybody. Uh, be careful with your money, please. The, and nothing mm-hmm. we said here was actual financial advice. If you listen to us, you're stupid. Uh, that's my <laughs> disclaimer. So for Jada, Lexi, Skip, my name is Corey. Saying, don't be stupid. And you just got banged. <laughs> uh. <laughs>